We can ride anywhere we need to go We can ride all night up to the morning As long as we make the show We can be the best or we can be the worst We can be the best thing you ever heard With the motor singing and the grandstands ringing It's hard to put it all in words But this is how we ride, this is how we do Tossing her in sideways, living the life, living the ride, eyesight, winning to die. Cross her up on the cushion, crossing the line. Caught some drama and some bullshit they didn't like. And if they don't like the move, then we're ready to fly. But this is how we ride, this is how we do. gentlemen we are here on a halloween we have the uh suits up we're ready to be a, a dirt track politician and that's kind of honestly that's what we're somewhat talking about here today hopefully everybody is uh answering the doors i've been busy answering the doors for the kiddos and stuff myself so i'm sure a bunch of people out there are uh, interesting uh, talk discussion we have here today. It, it was spurred on the Zach Rhodes uh, interview. If you haven't seen that, go check that out. But I guess you could call it a colleague of his uh, from the racing world uh, messaged me and said he had some opinions on some of the stuff uh, that we had said. And we have him uh, on the line now. And it is uh, Doug Dodson. Or is it Dodson? Tell me, how do you say it? What, what I know there's different ways. Uh, yeah, Dodson. <clears throat> Dodson, even though it's a D and not a T. Yeah, D Doug Dodson. Yeah, okay. you know, you know, you're a, a less than famous race car driver when we have to start out like this, right? <laughs> well, I mean, the the photo I found of you at least was in Victory Lane, so you're a winner out there, or 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 what? What are you like in the Deweese category? You used to win, and what 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 what's happening? <laughs> Funny thing is, is I actually had, I, I've raced about every division in Central PA, and I actually, in the early 2000s, I ran, or uh, late 2000s, like 2007 through 2011, I ran 410s and did win a, a 410 race at Lincoln uh, over Lance DeWeese. Wow. So you're, you're on a, I mean, technically, I mean, if you beat Kyle Larson one night, I mean, technically you could say you're better yeah. than Kyle. So, I mean, if you beat, if you beat yeah, Lance man. one night, I mean, you're, you're technically better than Lance DeWeese. You just didn't have the same cards fall the way you wanted them. You know, I mean, right. You know, no one has to talk about how Lincoln used to rubber up back then or anything like that. We can just leave it at that. Well, and, and, and funny enough that we're on this topic in a way, you know, I, I, I think the thing you wanted to talk about was payouts a little bit. Cause, and, and I, I see, the, the race saver situation in PA especially, uh, I think that is where the, I don't want to call it a predatory sense that race saver implements onto society, but it definitely seems to prey on the desire to be a sprint car racer in that area and in, 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 on the fan side of things or, or just everyone's a fan, but it seems like it does prey on those who want to be in a sprint car because it seems like there's a lot of cars in that division. And the reason I guess I say prey is because the, the cars aren't super cheap. They're, they're cheaper than, you know, a 410. But the payout is, isn't, isn't the, and this is an issue <clears throat> for 305s across the board. 
but the the payout up there is in the four hundred five hundred dollar range. I think it is. I know that the start is up there two twenty five two fifty or something like that. But I I I, I know that happens up there. And I think it, it, you know, it preys on the hopes and dreams of being a sprint car guy. If you go race sprint cars, uh, MPA, you feel like you're somebody, you know, just doing it. So I, I do think the payouts are not where they should be for how much those cars cost. That's just how I, I, I view it. Well, I, as far as if we could get more overall pay, I mean, I think that would be good for us for sure. Um, but one of the things that you know, so many times, especially being here in central PA, when, you know, I, I've been racing this division for a while and my wife raced it for a while. She was involved for several years before me. And, uh, so I've been around it uh, for a while. And anytime I bring up the, the series, I hear, you know, to anyone in, in central PA that knows racing, the, the same response, it's like, oh yeah, that's a, that's a pretty nice division, but they just don't pay anything. And it's always that perception based on the the fact that the winner's share is 450. Um, but our overall purse is actually pretty high compared to really any any comparable division of where we hold our place on the schedule. Um, so you're talking about Central comparing PA, to like UMP dirt car modifieds and like still blocked late models are you where, where are you putting the the 305 sprint car in comparable expense in in that saying that you're giving there what are the classes are we comparing well, to yeah so in central pa there's so many open wheel classes so many sprint car classes we're either a, a second division or a third division um so sometimes we're in the in the place on the schedule that the street stocks would be uh you know um, but yet, uh, you know, like our total purse uh, is just over six thousand dollars for a twenty-four car field. Um, like the Super Sportsman division that runs at BAPS, they race for a thousand to win. Um, Legacy division, um, well, from the old Silver Springs days, um, their total purse is fifty-eight hundred seventy-five bucks. Um, so they're racing a thousand to win, one hundred and twenty-five to start, and their purse doesn't change for since 2016 and I actually think it went down back then um so uh it you know it, a lot of people think we have absolutely no pay or that we're trying to keep the pay low intentionally or something like that in our division um but it's it really I think you mentioned about the uh the car counts being high and that uh you, you know it's kind of predatory to have so many cars and and race for a 450 that, to win yeah, but yeah. I, I would almost i would almost say that the the fact that the way the pay structure is that um it's it's really well spread out so that everyone coming to, to show up has a, a decent amount of their cost covered is the reason our car counts are so high well but wouldn't you say uh, uh, it's, uh, how, how long have you raced the 305 before i continue how many years uh since 2018 or 2019, so five or six years. Okay. Well, I guess that was a little late, but I was going to say if you've been around a little bit uh, with the 305, you know, it used to be a decently, you know, economically sound motor package, and it isn't that really mo anymore. I hear that some can get away with it, but... You know, when it first started coming around, you know, the 15, 16, 17s in, in the South, at least, uh, you know, it was a motor package that if you had, you know, 10 to 15 grand in the motor, you're looking at a very durable uh, motor that would la last an extremely long time. And then all of a sudden, here comes the Dragon Claws and this, that and the other. And now you're looking at a, a race saver sprint car motor. You're racing for, you know, four to five hundred to win with a twenty seven thousand dollar motor. Um, how have you seen it develop since you got into it? Uh, 18, 19, I would assume it would have still been around the, the 15 ish range or to 20 ish range for the, the pristine motors. But I, I'm, I know it's went up since then. Well, yeah, but in the past two or three years, anything involving, uh, that, that has aluminum as a raw material pretty much doubled in cost. So, um, we're seeing it across the board, but certainly engines, uh, have gone up. Uh, injections are a big, that's a good point because, uh, I mean, 
the in injection. 10, years, yeah. 10, 15 years ago, everybody had old used Hillborns on it. Right. And, and it was, it was kind of, everyone's in the same boat. And then, yeah, now there's a, uh, you know, four or $5,000 angler and, and, and uh, Kinsler packages on them. And, and they do make a difference. I mean, the, uh, you know, it is the days of the old uh, original Hillborn really are, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's tough to get those things to work right. You can, you can actually win with them. They're just so much finickier to get right. Um, well, and especially if so, you're yeah, on a, a smaller think... track that's snappier, you know, you need that yep, injection. Yep. I mean, you could get away with the hill burn maybe at a, a Port Royal if you don't, you, you know, need to react mm-hmm. to the throttle much. But when you get on those shorter tracks, three eighths and below, I mean, being able to get back in the throttle and it react is, is everything when you're talking about a, you know, a sprint car that maybe gets above the, the 6,800 RPM mark. Yeah, I, I do know that uh, uh, when, you know, past couple of years, uh, we had, you know, he's moved on now, but uh, we had Garrett Bard kind of dominating our series, and he had a Hillborn on his. It wasn't the old, old Hillborn. It was their mega power, but it was still, uh, it wasn't a Kinsler, or, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're still more affordable than the Kinsler or the um, uh, Angler, so. Um, so yeah, the, I will give you that the injection system cost has uh, been an added thing, uh, but the engine rules themselves, I do think they're they're well suited to. Uh, uh, you know, one thing that uh, um, you know, fr- like French Grimes, and you know, he's an interesting character. But one of the things he stated as what his intention was with the rules was saying, you know, you can't stop people from spending money in racing, but you don't need to reward it. And I think the engine rules do a good job of that. We, my father-in-law builds our engines in, in, in his, you know, in their garage out in New Jersey. Um, and, uh, and, and we've had our injection system that we have, we have angler injection systems. We've had them for, well, since my wife was racing. Uh, so we did make that investment once and then, uh, for, for, uh, and, and we've been running them for a while. And we rebuild them every now and then, but uh, the engines themselves will, uh, you know, the rules, you can get away with a, there's, there's no need, there's no real, there's no advantage at all to spending more than, you know, seven, 800 bucks on a crank. I've heard and, it's a very good engine that you literally could just put together in any old shop. Yeah. Or yeah. Garage. I mean, it, it, if you have, you know, that's, and the big thing is just having that you know so uh, anyone with some engine building experience it's pretty basic stuff that you know it, it's all general small block chevy stuff so uh you know a little bit of money prepping a block and balancing a rotating assembly and you can assemble an engine and and, and do it pretty affordably well of course obviously if you go to a, an engine builder and, and ask them to build an engine they're 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 they they have valuable services and they're that's their job. They're going to make their money off of it. So, um, you know, it's going to definitely be more expensive going to an engine builder, but, uh, I, I know, uh, a lot of people do build their own or at least do a lot, some of the work there. They maybe have a, a short block assembled and do the rest of them themselves or something like that. Well, of course, in the race saver situation, you have a sealed motor, uh, situation. I believe that's still what the IMCA race saver rules are correct. Yeah, you uh, when dur- during the build you have uh, have it teched and 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 uh, they check a bunch of things and then they put the bolt the cylinder head on right there and put some seals on it and uh, uh, you know they they check you get a hard card that has the seal numbers and the head numbers and everything uh, that it's registered with IMCA and then uh, our at least here in the PA series uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, spot tech done with either valve spring pressure, valve lift, or, uh, uh, you know, all the, all, some of the things that are easy to check at the track. Um, and we actually had, uh, the one year for one of our bigger, bigger races at the end of the year, Justin Clark come out from Ohio and ended up, uh, uh, checking a little bit high on the valve lift. And, uh, unfortunately I, you know, he wasn't doing it to try to cheat. It was so, uh, it was pretty close, but, uh, you know, he failed tech. Well, and that's that. That only reason I bring it up is I've, I mean, I've experienced where you know, if you're in an area and you got a certified sealer and he's got a, a favorite driver, you know, those motors that get sealed ain't always uh, properly 
inspect it. I know they cracked one in West Texas one time that was like a 383, you know? So it's like, yeah. uh, that's kind of the, also the issue there is the, the nepotism within the actual certified sealers of the motor. Yeah. Everything's all, you know, anything in racing is always, uh, people. So it's, there's good people, there's bad people. And, uh, you know, and, and a, the integrity of a series and the te- integrity of the tech is only as good as the integrity of the people in charge. So, um, yeah, I, it's going to, you know, your mileage may vary in whatever region you're in. Uh, so uh i i've been my experience throughout the uh either whether it be the um the pa sprint series the mid-atlantic sprint series or the virginia sprint series has been uh you know people that at least give me the impression that they're doing it for the right reasons and not uh not you know corrupted in any way well, do you think that's also a part of it not paying a lot? You know, when uh, if if races were ten or twenty thousand, then it's worth the cheat. But as long as they're five hundred to win and two fifty to start, it's more so uh, just about having fun in a way. <laughs> I mean, I think it helps, but I I mean it. I you know, racing's competitive, and when people get competitive, they'll do anything to win. Sometimes, no matter if it's uh for a, a participation ribbon or for a, a, a 10,000 bucks. So I, I do think it helps though that, uh, you know, if it was, if there was a lot, if there, people could justify it a little more, like kind of, you can justify the, the, the ethical, uh, uh, bend in your moral compass. I think, uh, uh, people might be more apt to do it with more money on the line. Um, but you still need tech no matter what. Cause like I said, as soon as you're in competition, people will try to get an edge. Right. And, and y'all have like one of the biggest car counts in PA. I think, uh, just the three Oh five sprint cars. I don't know if there's another vehicle out there that carries as much of a, a car count per number as y'all do. Funny enough, it is IMCA in PA country. That's just hilarious in itself. Um, but, what is the, is the series? You would think that, you know, you see when a big time car owner has an open ride that they'll bring someone in from out of, out of state or something. Whereas in my opinion, a, a, a properly functioning racing scene, whether that's late models with 602s and 604s and supers or sprint cars with 305s, 358s and 410s, that your 305 is going to be where, you know, tryouts are, are located. You know, I had to I had to talk with Jeremy Elliott about this, and he said he just don't think that's the case. And I'm like, where are you going to be able to see the talent that's not 14, the ones who had to go out earn the wealth, the capital yeah. to afford a 40? I mean, a three a 305 Sprint car, if you do it right with the with everything, it's probably still a forty thousand dollar situation there with a backup wing and everything going correctly, uh, even on a decently spent motor, not not a 25 or six, but you know, something in the 15 to 20 range and your chassis and your backup, you got 40 grand. I mean, that's hard to just come by in life. What what, what do you think it needs uh, to become that kind of tryout situation? Because it seems like it is like the bastard child of the PA racing scene. Nobody really gives it a is. damn or talks <laughs> about the 305 scene. I know. There. And it's, I think it's because we're so saturated with sprint cars in this area. I mean, it, as a sprint car driver and a sprint car fan, I mean, being in central PA is just awesome. It, it, it's easy to take it for granted, but uh, it really is incredible uh, with all the good tracks and good, good racing we have here. But I think, you know, there's just so much sprint car racing that by the time uh, uh, anyone gets around to paying attention to the race saver sprint cars, it's, you know, they've already looked at, they've already watched the, the 410 guys race, the 358 guys race, the 360 guys race. And it's like, um, it, it, it really, you, you said it kind of like the, the redheaded stepchildren of the, the, the central PA sprint car scene. It does feel like that a lot of times. Yeah. I mean, I, super I don't sportsmen's mind so are much, above but, y'all sometimes. I mean, yeah, but, uh, I, I mean, I, I do tell people, you know, anyone who's, uh, who talks to me about getting into it. And, they, and I'll, you know, I will say like, if you're, if you truly are trying to make a name for yourself in sprint car racing, I really would recommend, you know, putting together a 358. I mean, it's going to cost a little more money, but um, 
you know, you at least have the oper- a better opportunity of 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 getting somewhere. And I think one of the reasons is is the stepping stones would be 305s to 358s to 410s, and all the 358 teams are kind of family teams. It's not like there's 358 car owners, so it's you know, hard to it, put it, the money all, on a guy in a 305. Put, yeah. Well, you know, if if you're if all of your 358 teams are family teams that have you know for their own their own son to drive, they're not going to hire a 305 guy into the 358s. So, you know, I think it's really the and a 305 you know, guy to a 410 is just as crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you look at we do have some PA Sprint Series guys who have done really well in 410s, but none of them really got an opportunity until they went and did it themselves. Mm. Like Logan Wagner dominated in the 305s out here but it wasn't until he put a 410 in his own car and went out to Lernerville won an all-star race and won a race at BAPS that he got to get into the Zemco ride that would have never happened if he had only dominated the PA Sprint Series um Tyler Reeser I mean he dominated PA Sprint Series and then um you know he had to put it put his own deal together with a 410 and win a race at Port Royal to to really get anywhere um so we, we, you know, there's a, there's some drivers that that have the obviously have the talent to to compete with the four tens, but it's it's really hard to to make that jump uh, just based on three, you know, the three hundred five experience alone. Um, there's usually some, uh, um, you know, you, you really got to kind of take take the leap and take the risk yourself if you really want to go that way. It seems. Well, and then of course. Uh, I guess the one benefit to doing a 305 is, you know, if you ever do want to do 360, 358, 410, you just got to change your motor and your rear end out mainly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is, uh, you, you can really transfer over pretty easy. Um, you do, have, like you said, you do have to make sure you get a good rear end because uh, 410 stuff's a lot harder on it. Uh, uh, and, and the 305 you need to twist stuff, her out. You know, get away. Yeah. You can get away with a lot of, uh, lightweight stuff and, and run it forever. Whereas, uh, yeah, you get in the four tens, you need to be pretty careful with that. Um, you know, I, I kind of went the other way. I, I, when I was young, I was, I had, uh, my eyes set on, you know, seeing how far I could go in sprint car racing. And, uh, and, and, but then, uh, there was a kind of a turning point of when I started my career, uh, in, uh, you know, sales and engineering, that it really kind of made me realize how much focus and dedication you have to put to be competitive in, in the 410 level in so even, you know, in central PA that, uh, as soon as I started, uh, having some, a lot of my time taken up by a full-time career, it, it became very obvious that that was not gonna, that my, my, uh, my growth path was going to slow down a heck of a lot. Uh, and, uh, and so, it, it both it kind of happened uh you know i wasn't i didn't realize that and stepped away it, it it's just it, it's kind of an after the fact thing after i lost my ride and i said you know what that makes a lot of sense i really wasn't as focused as i needed to be uh after i you know got a job so um so then i i, I raced uh super sportsman's for a while uh you know back when they still had no power steering that was pretty fun uh and then uh you know, got into the race saver 305s and I, I've really, really come to enjoy it really because of the, the culture fits a, uh, you know, someone who wants to competitively race sprint cars and have people in a similar situation to race against that you're not racing against people who it's their full-time job. Um, and, and just can, can beat you by, you know, just having more time to, and, and resources to, to throw at it. Um, so everyone we race against is, is kind of in the same situation. You know, no one's a super funded team, but there's some pretty good money. You know, people still spending pretty good money in it, but there's, uh, you know, everyone's got, got jobs is, is going to the track racing and, and having a, a, a decent level of, of respect for each other and having a lot of fun, you know, having a lot of fun with it too. I mean, I, I, I race competitively because I am competitive, but you know, it's, it's, I do it on the weekends to kind of have, have something I enjoy and, you know, racing a a sprint car, Port Royal right around the board, right around the fence is really cool, especially when you're passing cars doing it. Um, And it it really sucks. Like I know when I raced four tens, like everyone in the pits is miserable. 
because there's so much mm. pressure and so much money. If you are not, if you're, if you're like kind of having fun with it and joking, like you can still be taking it seriously. But if you're, if, you know, the, the perception is, well, there's way too much money involved to be having fun here. <laughs> That's true. I mean, I went to Path Valley instead of the World of Outlaws uh, when they were Friday, Saturday, uh, here uh, right after the Eldora Million, that kind of summer swing, summer nationals. And the pit area with the past series was just next level as far as, you know, enjoyment, camaraderie. Uh, I mean, you go to the Outlaw I, race I the next night. Good, yeah, oh, go ahead. You got some good food in Drew Young's trailer. I mean, I was surprised, you know, because you go, and then I went to the Outlaws the next night, and it's like, motherfuck this guy, motherfuck that guy, stab someone in the back if you, if it'll get you a spot on the track. And, and, and that was, it's very true. The difference in uh, kind of enjoyment is 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 there. And I, I, I will contribute that to the lower payouts as well. It's not like you're racing mm-hmm. for the Taj Mahal. Um where do you think well, 305 I mean, where do you think 305 races could go, you know? I mean, if there was a 305 World of Outlaw tour, would it I mean, would that attitude translate instantly? Obviously, you're under the banner of IMCA. Most people think of IMCA as a bad a bad situation. Obviously, they bought Race Saver. Race Saver wasn't started by them. Yeah. But how do you feel I, about I being honestly, an IMCA driver cuz I'm assuming you have to have a license, right? Yeah, yeah. And and, and you know, we Basically, we pay a uh, hundred and some bucks a year for a license. Uh, they do pro- provide some additional insurance. Uh, you know, if we were to get in an incident, kind of like how the tracks have a, a policy that provides some some money. It's not huge, but it's it's definitely helpful if you ended up needing it. Um, so there's there's some benefit to it. I was concerned when I'm, IMCA got involved because uh, you know the race saver deal was going pretty good and and it. I, I, you know, I, any change to a good thing could potentially be a bad thing. Um, but so far they've managed it fairly well. They, they haven't, they've kind of, uh, been able to, to manage all the people who want to try to take it in a different direction, kind of kept it true to its roots. So at least on the race saver side, I'm, I'm, I, I don't, I don't have a strong opinion of IMCA one way or another. Um, you know, it's, it certainly hasn't been the, uh, you know, it definitely seems like in the modified world, there's a really, really, uh, um, you know, love or hate relationship with it. <laughs> so well, it, it, I, I, I don't it's, know. It's it a government that, body. It's, it's the biggest government body out yeah. there, you know, and they use their power sometimes. So, yep. So, I mean, the, the nice thing too about it is if you do, uh, you know, there's so many regions around that, that all follow fall under that uh, you know, IMCA race saver uh, sanction that um, like Owen Dim, uh, you know, he went out and ran at Lawrenceburg and, uh, and some place in Ohio uh, the other weekend. Um, you know, some guys will go out to Lernerville. Uh I know in the beginning and the end of the year, sometimes guys go down to the Carolina uh, sprint tours uh, and run with them. We get some crossover between our, PA series and the Jersey series, the mid Atlantic sprint series. Um, so, I mean, you, you can travel around if you want to. Um, and, and there's options if you want to try to travel around and, and see different tracks and, 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 and do that. I know for me and, and our team, we're pretty traveled out from our past experiences. So we're, we're, we really enjoy just, uh, having a lot of tracks within an hour of, of, of here. Uh, but, uh, that's a nice, nice thing about it too. Um, so yeah, I I uh, um, do do have been enjoying the 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 camaraderie and the the allowing uh, myself to enjoy racing uh, as you know as much as uh, much as I have in in a long time. Well, of course, I've I've had an idea of of you could do something nationally with the three hundred fives, do like national meets in dif- dif- different sectors of. Uh, the country, you mm-hmm. know, and have like a 10 or 15 race points situation uh, outside of their national championship. It just seems like there's so many cars you could make it work. It's it's kind of, you know, Baylox is in the comment section talking about 305s, and he's down there in Florida, and they can't even get a sprint car scene going because they're holding down on to more traditional rules and, you know, steelhead 360 stuff where 
you know, if, if someone would seriously bring a 305 situation down there, it would instantly add that kind of um, stabilization with the rules package. And I think that is something that Ray Saver has done, yeah. and, and that's the important part. Well, yeah, I heard you talking to, to Zach. You were mentioning about, you know, the idea of like a 305 speed week during, uh, you know, the, the January, February time frame when, the, when everyone's racing down there. I, I think that would actually – be a big hit. I think you get a lot of Carolina guys, uh, you know, you probably get some PA guys going down for sure. Um, Texas guys, I'm I, sure I there's think, North Dakota, Houston's people yeah. that don't want to be stuck in the snow, you know. Yeah, I mean, like uh, Florida in January and February has just become another one of those, you know, sprint car world pilgr- pilgrimages that everyone just does. And and uh, to be a part of that, I think there's a lot of, there'd be a lot of interest. It, well, you it have to pay you a like little Florida money. Where you, yeah, yeah, I, and I, I think that would, uh, um, uh, yeah, I, I think that would be reasonable to pay, pay some, pay a little bit higher. But like for us, a, um, when we have a, a bigger paying race, uh, like we we do a thousand, like a thousand five thousand to win five hundred to start, and, and that that actually, you know, creates a, a decent buzz. Um, you know, some of the other regions will kind of, uh, uh, get a little bit, get away from the, uh, what French Grimes originally had, uh, stated where, uh, you know, last place should pay half of what the winner's share is. Right. And so they'll, you know, they'll, they'll, uh, they'll keep the, the start money, um, you know, in the 200, 300 range and do like a 1500 or $2,000 win race. And I, I certainly understand that, especially when you're down in like Carolina where, you Texas know, was the same. You couldn't get race, a, I mean, I, I helped run racetracks in Texas there for a while and, and the race saver mm-hmm. surge. And if you didn't pay a thousand to win 200 to start, you, uh, you weren't going to get a field of cars. Yeah. And, and, and they, you know, yeah, those regions, a lot of times you end up where race saver sprint cars are the only sprint cars or yes, you know, really the only thing around. So like in Carolina, that's all that's available for sprint cars. Um, so they're, they end up be you know, really holding up a, a, a much more prestigious place in the schedule there too. Um, so I, I don't knock any other series for, for doing what they need, you know, what they think they need to do for, for their region. I just know for in central PA, we're in a unique scenario here with uh, having more sprint cars than we can shake a stick at. So, um, so we have the opportunity to have a, a division here that really is, you know, meant to, to kind of keep everyone, uh, keep everyone's costs covered as good as possible, get us to the track and allow us to enjoy the, the thrill of racing a sprint car at Port Royal or Sealands Grove or Lincoln or, you know, all the, all the, all the great tracks around here. Right. Definitely. How do you think a 305 Florida deal would go? You know, I was thinking 1,500 or 2,500 each race, you know, I mean, obviously you'd have to fit it in there around the, the sprint car schedules because it does seem like, uh, most the three hundred five, most the three hundred five racers are more so fans of the world of outlaws and and things along those lines. They're in the stands on the big shows and on the track at the local racing. Um, what 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 would be a successful scenario in the in the case of three hundred fives in Florida? The I would I would think you'd have sixty or seventy cars a night when you consider all the regions and how many cars are out there. Yeah, and I I also think it's just one of those things that I think people will go to something like that. If they're going to go, I think they're going to go they're going to make it work if they want to go and and the we're well, dealing with the working class. The pay, That's the I'm issue, not, I think. Yeah. That that is the challenge is the amount of time you'd have to take off to do it. And that's where um it it definitely is uh I, I, I definitely think it's harder to get the 305s to do the midweek and traveling stuff. But I think for if if it was well announced and there was time to plan, I think peop, you get a fair amount of people that would say, "All right, we want to do this. We're gonna we're gonna take a vacation week and we're gonna go down and do this." So I got to have it out before December, the schedule and everything. I yeah, I think you. I think there's got to be time P-R-I. to plan. Yeah. Okay, and you're not going though. You ain't got the time. <laughs> nah, I'm I, I'm running a, a Japanese manufacturing company here. That'd be hard to take that much time off. Yeah, you said you're going to Japan. What the hell are you doing? 
are you undercover for the mafia or uh, what? <laughs> uh, uh, our parent company is based in Osaka, Japan, and uh, uh, it's been a while since we've gone over there with the whole COVID international travel restrictions. So uh, the first time in like five, six years, we've been, we're going to be over to the parent company to, to do some technical exchange with them. So we'll be spending a week over there and uh, uh, a few of us, my operations en- manager, uh, engineering manager, and uh, my chairman will be going over and we'll be uh, yeah spending some time in Osaka, Japan. International travel is kind of scary in these times. It seems like some people are worried about it. If I was if I was going somewhere uh, different, I would I might uh, say I agree with that. But going to Japan is uh, not real uh, not real scary. Not okay. They are protected pretty well. Yep. All right. Well, is there anything else you wanted to get off your chest at me? Uh, are you a Kyle Larson no, fan? No, I, I mean, <laughs> I'm a Kyle Larson. I, I'm a Kyle Larson uh, respecter. I think he's incredible talent and i don't know how he did it's one of those things you always get jealous of someone who can just uh whip everyone's butt and make it look easy well opportunity is big in his department as well so Mm -hmm. he had he has had a lot of great opportunities that not a lot of people have you know the debate of who's better larson or bell was alive and and well prior to the whole inward deal and larson going to the Mm -hmm. dirt full time and being able to race more than bell and now that's not even considered a discussion because kyle larson had more opportunities to race on dirt than christopher bell yep so i mean racing is an opportunity sport i just think that people could go to 305s and find guys to give opportunities Mm -hmm. to pa is is one of those scenes i think it should be happening more and more but you mentioned 358s, and, and 358s are kind of dead around there. I hear the 360, 358 guys blame the 305 division for that. Well, that's what I mean. Like, I when I raced Super Sportsman, I know uh, some, you know, some guys were felt really threatened by the 305 series. That, and one of the things that they, uh, they kept saying is, well, they're, you know, how are we supposed to keep, you know, keep them paying us when, uh, you know, keep paying the super sportsman when when they'll schedule the 305s for with a fifteen hundred dollar, two thousand dollar purse, and so they just they they felt threatened because they thought uh, the 305 division was this absolutely cheap division for a track to run. But in reality, we're we're we've kind of t- maxed out what 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 tracks will give us. Like I said, we actually get paid more than super sportsmen. Um, the other thing about uh, how our payout structured in the 305s here in PA is that uh, the we we pay anyone who runs a B main but not qual- doesn't qualify gets a hundred bucks. So that's like mm. a pretty high tow money for our uh, for 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 a support division as well. So I know some of the races we had uh, uh, like fifty cars up at Port Royal. I, I kind of did the math and they were shell had to, they had to shell it up near ten grand for for the three hundred five purse. Wow, because of the non qualifier. Yeah, yeah. So like it's really not as good of a backgate division as some other divisions. Um, so like when you, we get a ton of cars, I mean, it's still good for the track, uh, for us to bring in like 50 cars, you know, they're still making money off of it, but not the same way as if, a uh, you know, a small car division or the, or the limited late models or something like that brought a lot of cars in. Right. Right. Well, all right. I guess we'll, uh, let you go. Uh, like I said, is there anything else yeah. you wanted to yell about? Scream at me. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I, I appreciate the, the, the debate on it. I know, uh, it's a topic that, uh, uh, gets bandied about a lot and, uh, I, 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 you know, I don't have any, uh, uh, anger about it or anything, but I just, uh, it, it's usually a, a communication issue of understanding what the, what the situation is. Um, we're always welcoming more, uh, uh, you know, higher purses for, for our division and, uh, uh, anyone who would, uh, be interested in, in adding some sponsorship in, uh, you know, we kind of talked about what our payout structure is that that's a, a part of that. So, um, I certainly, uh, would look for more, more money for sure. But, uh, you know, the, uh, myth of, uh, 305 pay being ridiculously low is, uh, a little more nuanced Check than just, start uh, money. they, do, yeah, they don't pay anything. Well, they do. It just, you know, you have to look at who it's being paid to. Right. 
All right. Well, thanks for calling in, Doug, and uh, I, I guess enjoy Japan. Yeah, thanks. I really appreciate the the time, and uh, and uh, you kind of went easy on me. I was surprised. Well, well, there ain't nothing. There ain't nothing hard to go in about. I mean, I, I just think yeah. that. <laughs> I just think that it could pay more to win, but I understand what you're saying, and 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 that's the concept is to keep it in that uh, just kind of fun mm-hmm. division class. Yep, yep. You got right. it. Well, thanks for calling in, Doug. Well, uh, I guess let me know All how right. Japan goes. All right. Thanks, Chaz. Bye. Uh, that was Doug Dodson from the PA Sprint Series group. I did see some some uh, comments in here. We are going to talk just a little bit on some comments here. want to thank him for t- calling in. I just think that 305 should pay a little bit more. Uh, I don't even think they have a special show over there. It's 500 to win. I think it could have a thousand or some two thousand or five thousand dollars special events throughout the year. Um, the only reason I say it's predatory is because everybody in Central PA wants to be a sprint car driver, and it's the cheapest division that they can get in. Um, the payout I have an issue with it. Some people don't. They see it how he sees it, but I like competition. I think the winner should be rewarded. Uh, and and it's it's not necessarily a, a situation where the winners are taking home the bank. It's a situation where everybody is uh, helping each other out, kind of camaraderie in the payout department. Um, somebody said something about RTJ. Can you make it? Are you going to make that RTJ deal, deal happen? I did talk to Ricky Thornton Jr. about the RMS situation. He says that he has a ride, a pretty prominent ride for the Chili Bowl, and they're going to be making an announcement on that very soon. Um, I don't know who else saw it, but yes, Mike Marlar signs up with the Skyline Motorsports team. A uh, pretty cool looking car that has come out onto the uh, to the block. Mike Marlar, of, of course, Mike Marlar, of course, uh, leaving uh, Delk, parting ways with Delk, um, and that team having so much success. The blue one fifty seven has now gone red. Uh, I'm trying to bring it up right now, the whole uh, picture. It's actually a nice-looking uh, looking car, if we can find it out. Here it is right here. Nice-looking little 157 uh, vehicle, black and red. Shane Clanton, of course, used to be the teammate. Of course, now he's going to be Mike Marlar. That is a teammate of Tyler Bruning, of course, Greg Bruning being the owner, operator of Skyline Motorsports. Luckily, you know, maybe some of you people who have a driver who's trying to develop, you at least have two cars and you and you put a veteran in the car to, to usher the team along. That seems to be like what they have done here uh, with Mike Marlar and the 157 Skyline Motorsports operation. So sharp looking car, sharp looking ride, really good driver, real good people. Uh, with the Skyline Motorsports organization as well. They want to win. Winning matters a lot, especially when they pay as much as they do in the late model division. They ain't, they ain't got no 305 situation. So it uh, looks like Shane Clanton out and uh, Mike Marlar in. Of course, this team going to Longhorn Chassis. That was a big switch and change for the year. So we'll, we'll see how this works out for the uh, 157 Skyline Motorsports uh, collaboration. This is the new t-shirts just out on the block. If you want to know where I'm looking at right here, uh, this is a uh, race ranch. So, uh, or race ranch. Sorry about that. So check them out, check those shirts out, all those things. And like I said, unfortunately not able to get Ricky Thornton jr. Into the midget ride. Uh, not very fun to watch sprint cars go slow. It is true. Three Oh fives are very slow. I don't think they put on good shows on big tracks. The quarter miles, the three eights, they can be exciting because they don't look as slow because there's a corner coming up. But if you go, you know, I used to be a big 360 guy because that's all we got in the South. But when I went to PA for the first time and saw four tens week in and week out, 360s all of a sudden became slow. And so that made 305s extremely slow. So I do think that they are more of a short track class. Once you get them on that big track, it's Daytona, no matter how you try to get away from it. So, that's one negative as well to the class. This Florida deal, this Florida Speed Weeks, looks like I'm going to have to get onto the phone here very soon and make it happen. A lot of people interested. Added another driver to the list today, old Doug, uh, Doug Dodson. So we'll see what happens uh, there. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, just a real quick one. Uh, we're, we're all dressed up as, as uh, 
Trump without the jacket right now. We're going to be going out onto the town here for Halloween. Hopefully you will have a Halloween or a happy Halloween, that is. And, uh, yeah, things happening. If you ain't checked out that interview that we did last night with uh, RMS team owner um, Dave Estep, as he talks about the splitting with Team S, go check that out. We put it out yesterday. It's in in our channel under the live videos. Uh, and stay tuned for the rest of the week. We do plan on putting our first song out of November, the music month of November. And it is going to be called Down in These Roots. So stay tuned for the video. We might even be dressed up like this and, and doing the characters of the, of the music video as well. So anyways, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in. Like the video, comment below. As always, share. Join the membership. Get your name up there. We may even make a song for that. That just rhymed a little bit. I don't know. We'll see. And as always, be sure to subscribe. Catch you next time, ladies and gentlemen.